Hello everyone and welcome to this impromptu weapon tutorial. This section is specifically about reference gathering, which sounds a little boring, I get it. But it's a pretty important section. Uh, it helps build a good foundation to begin with, because it helps frame the bigger picture of the modelling stage and helps you break down the modelling into more manageable chunks and will actually help in, later on in the texturing phase. It's a really good foundation to begin with. Um, and so, uh, what I would recommend is to use PureRef. It's um, a free program and it has um, served me well for the past few years of me using it for my own professional stuff. Um, and this is what we're using here. This is uh, the model that we're using. I found this just randomly searching impromptu um, guns uh, on Google. And I eventually came across this and thought it was just perfect. Um, so let's break this model down a little bit. So we see here that um, we have this wooden grip here and it actually looks on closer inspection to be, um, I think it could, it looks like uh, something from a toy wooden gun, like a rifle or um, like a, from a while ago. Um, that's all broken and um, th there's probably some dowels that were here just trying to keep it held together there's no trigger uh, which is interesting um, uh, it looks kind of old and you know the way it's gone darker where it's been uh, held and used more obviously there's the um, gutter gun um, written on it and it looks like it has some sort of machining done to it, which we'll probably have to sculpt in as well. Uh, some various um, chips and damages. Um, and this black tape here, uh, which will be fun to do. And we have like these clips, which can be quite annoying to do, laborious, I've done them many times. They're called Jubilee clips. Um, and we have uh, the foregrip, which seems to be made from brass Piping, piping and fittings mixed with some sort of steel uh, bolt heads um, with and that's some uh, what I believe is to be um, I forget the name of it I'll remember later and tell you some sort of tape for uh, copper piping and you and brass piping you see it here as well um, and we have some bolts that's are welded on so that should be fun. We've got another view here just to see. Um, it seems to be a stock. Um, and this this piping that seems to be drilled um, or filed down and um, a hollow tube. It seems to be like a a, a single shot um, gun. And there's no space for a magazine or anything like that. So uh, you would pull this back to the side, loading your bullet. And then shoot it, I imagine. Um, the Jubilee kit clip comes around and um, angles off to the side, so we'll have to take that into account when modeling it. And this is what we're really doing we're just breaking down the model, seeing what's what needs to be um, modeled, and figuring it out before we even start, which is pretty important. There's um, some black tape here as well. Um, and there seems to be a um, hole cut out here, so it seems this whole section here is probably hollow uh, for the trigger mechanism to work in the Tully gun. Um, so yeah, um, brass piping with steel uh, bolt heads um, or bolts, different types, that might be a uh, Phillips um, or a flathead screw there welded on um, and these jubilee clips they come in all uh, different uh, forms so that should be interesting gathering resources um, I mean references for that um, so yeah so that's what you're gonna have to do is um, focus on one particular section at, the at a time when gathering references and just build up a, it doesn't have to be extensive but 
just help you give an idea of how to model um, the shapes and uh, the it could even inspire you to do something else because we don't have a trigger here uh, which is interesting because um, it means that we can come up with something and the idea with this tutorial as well is that you have some artistic license with this yourself so uh, we could have something like a peg here with an elastic, elastic band uh, uh, as part of the mechanism hidden inside or we could have some broken scissors I kind of like that idea um, or just a piece of broken metal coming off machined or something um, that's that part is really up to you um, I really like the idea of the broken scissors uh, so I'm probably going to go with that um, and I've noticed that there isn't a site for it you'd think that because it's a single shot you'd want some sort of uh, um, iron sight here um, so we could do that I've just had an idea maybe we could have some sort of blue tack or have it some some like a bent nail um, taped across or welded onto there possibly uh, blue tack is quite interesting I've never seen that before but yeah so I'll gather some references and I'll come back so here we are, I've got gathered my references, uh, I've gone over the gun again and just to see what I'd need. Um, so with the wood toy gun, um, it does, I found this which is in some way quite similar. Uh, we have the, the dowels drilled in at a similar place. Um, and we have the trigger, um, sp space for the trigger there. Um, and the wood is of similar grain it's not like a, there's not a lot of detail with the wood there's not a lot of um, um, cavities and crevices that um, a more rougher wood would um, have there is uh, damage um, on the inside where it's more used or it's maybe been dropped uh, which is what we uh, we see the cavities here and some damages around the side as well so it's quite similar it's good reference that is um, and the form of it is quite soft uh, edges like so if you were to bevel this it would be quite a thick bevel um, essentially and again with the dowels here as well the pattern is quite cool I mean we don't have to stick to the the gun to be exact but we can take inspiration from it and uh, go from there and here we have the the Jubilee clips these are quite interesting there's many ways to do these uh, but the idea I've got in my head is that we we'd lay it flat, model in the details, whether it's we punch holes through them, um, boolean holes, or we create the indentations uh, and the extrusions in the mesh, uh, like this one here. And then we, um, a longer curve, we just bend it um, 360 so it comes round on itself. Um, and then we'll just model this. Um, the tightening bracket um, on top of that um, or vice versa um, and then we have the welding um, just we don't need a lot of reference uh, for this really because well uh, there's not a lot of welding going on it seems to be quite obvious it's it's quite um, quite flat there's not not much to it but we again we don't have to stick to that concept we can make it um, um, really really bad welding uh, where there's a lot of spray and um, uh, extra bits elsewhere so you could have um, uh, bulges here and blobs of, um, uh, of solder here and we have the bolts just getting different references for the top um, with the details on there um, it would be good for the sculpting phases and creating the details in ZBrush um, or even in uh, Substance Painter and uh, just the unique details in uh, in a simple like flathead screw head um, it's quite interesting it just helps us build a foundation for the modeling and we have a, a good idea an overview of what we want to achieve um, 
and of course the brass piping. Um, this is a little bit more difficult to find the right reference because I don't know the exact terminology for that kind of that fitting, but uh, I just Googled three-way brass pipe fitting and um, these two were the closest that I got to it. Um, and this, even though we don't really need much reference for this because it's pretty straightforward, it's just good to have a bit of a library just in case you want to go in a different direction with it. Um, and it gives different ideas of what would typically be found on a brass fitting in terms of um, words being or letter, uh, numbers being embossed. Um, and we've got some examples of uh, the seal tape, um, of what it will look like clean, because then we can um, see, uh, then we can develop further, put dirt and grime on top of that, some sealant um, paste as well. That might be interesting to put on and just uh yeah that's it for the piping really uh, just different texturing uh possibilities with this uh, the grime and dirt and wear and tear and stuff and the different colors variations in it um and the trigger um i really like this i thought it would be really really nice um could be a lot of high information in the paint where um, ideally I'd have this section broken off and maybe have uh, the actual scissor blades put down a little bit and maybe possibly welded uh, so we'll go through that uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice little detail to have as the trigger uh, which would fit right into there possibly we may have to shorten it um, or maybe just have the the ring rather than the the longer um a handle for it so um now that we have our references gathered let's get into the modeling process